All right, guys, we're back today with an overview and first shots video of the Glock 44 chambered in 22 long rifle. This has been one of the craziest releases of a handgun that I've seen, and there is a lot of hype surrounding this handgun, good and bad. I want to give a huge shout out to American Pawn and Gun located in Monroe, North Carolina, right off 74, for donating this pistol to the channel for us to review, test, and evaluate. Without their support, it would be really difficult to get one of these to the channel, especially because one of the criticisms that it's a little bit higher price than a lot of other 22s. American Pond and Gun donated this to the channel so that we could do a fair and honest evaluation and not pull any punches. So I really appreciate uh, Greg's support. So if you swing by Monroe, North Carolina, check out American Pond and Gun. They've got a great selection of new and used handguns, including this new Glock 44. Let's show you what it comes with in the package. In a nutshell, you get everything that you would normally get with a Glock, minus the third magazine for the Gen 5s. This comes with two 10-round magazines, backstrap lock, box, cleaning kit, the whole nine yards, and the handgun itself. I was actually shooting it without any backstraps, and we will put the rest of these items to the side. Let's start off by talking about the main features. And the first thing I want to talk about is this is pretty much the same size, shape, and functions of a Glock 19 Generation 5. No finger grooves, front and rear serrations, with the exception of the fact that the slide itself is actually polymer with the steel insert in the bottom. This allows the slide to reciprocate correctly with the 22 recoil impulse, but without overbuilding it. Now, there have been some complaints that I've seen on the internet with this polymer cracking, but it's only been a couple. I will continue to run thousands of rounds through this and update you guys on the slide's performance, but that is something to consider right off the bat. Another quick difference I wanna mention between this and a standard Glock is the fact that the sight comes adjustable when you may have to do that. I noticed that this was shooting high. When I stretched this out to 40 yards, it seemed like it was a tack driver, but at a half size or a third size IPSC target at 40 yards, I had to aim at the very bottom of the target to make my hits. So something to consider, you may actually have to use those adjustable sights. You do have a sight window up at the top to see if you have a loaded round, but it's rather difficult to see down in there, but it is fairly possible. The takedown is absolutely the same as a standard Glock. The barrel and spring come out independently and you oil it and maintain it the same way. And since this is a striker fire Glock, it is okay to dry fire it considering you do have to dry fire it to take it down. Right off the bat, let's talk about the fact of these are only 10 round magazines and that was one of the biggest complaints of this Glock 44 as well as the fact that it did not come with a factory threaded barrel. So you can't suppress this right off the bat and it only comes with 10 round magazines which is rather disappointing. It does have the ambidextrous controls located on both sides that slightly stick out further like the Gen 5 Glock and in every other aspect this is pretty much a traditional Gen 5 Glock 19 but just chambered in 22 long rifle. So now that we've talked about the basic features, let's talk about reliability and shootability down at the range. Let's focus on the reliability, especially considering the price of this Glock. And if I haven't mentioned it yet, the MSRP is $430, although the street price, you can find this below $400. American Pawn and Gun has a very affordable price on this. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say the price out loud because of map pricing, but you can check out American Pawn and Gun's Facebook Again, this is under $400 when you go to their store and pick one up. Now, the reliability was shaky at first with pretty much any bulk pack ammunition I started to put through it, but I attributed that mostly to about a 100 round break-in period. After about 10 magazines, it actually started running all bulk pack ammunition great. I've seen some reports that it says it doesn't like 36 grain ammunition and some lower grain ammunitions, but mine actually ran that stuff fine. After about 100 to 150 rounds and some light oil, I did not have a problem. Now I noticed though, that it did really like the higher velocity Winchester ammunition, as well as the higher velocity Remington Golden Bullet. We also shot Remington Thunderbolt, Federal Bulk Pack, Winchester Bulk Pack, and a few other hand mixed rounds. And by the end of the day, it was functioning perfectly. Again, for me anyways, after that about 150 round break in period. Something to also consider with reliability was the magazines themselves loaded fairly simply, except for the fact that you have to hit this notch right here. So generally with a magazine uh, 22 mag, you can just slide it through and load it up. Uh, you really did have to pay attention to what you were doing to load these magazines. 
And if you weren't very careful towards the end, one of them could nose down. So I kind of held it backwards, jiggled this to get it to nose up. And once we started doing that, we had zero feed issues. But just know if that round is nosed down when you go to insert it, you could potentially give yourself problems, again, affecting the reliability. So after those 150 rounds, I probably put another 500 rounds, making it a total of about 650 rounds through this gun. And after that initial 150 rounds, we had zero issues. So now it is fairly reliable, but it is something to consider. I'm not quite sure why it had that break-in period, but it is rather stiff to rack this slide compared to other 22s. Everybody at the range that day tried the slide and said, yeah, it is rather stiff for a 22, but this is where it kind of gets into the shootability portion of this video review, and that's where this Glock really shines for people who own Glocks. So I've been holding back on my overall opinions, and I'm going to hold back still until the end, but I am going to talk about some positives since I discussed some of the negatives, like a 10-round magazine, no threaded barrel, and a very high MSRP compared to other 22s. This, though, is absolutely a perfect trainer for the Glock guy. If all you own is Glocks and you want something to take and plink with at the range that actually translates over a lot of that shooting ability this is a perfect option. It truly feels like you're grabbing from that holster a Glock 19 and engaging your target. The recoil impulse is a little bit more than some other 22s and I don't mind because again, I'm using this as a training aid for Glocks and not as a range plinker. The other thing is this is a tack driver, although it does shoot high, I feel like it groups very tightly. Also, you can translate all of the concealed carry holsters you have for your both your weapon and your magazines. This is a great training aid. The fact that the magazines are the same width means you can put them again into any of those Glock mag pouches so you don't have to change out your kit to practice down at the range, especially since the mechanics of the Glock are very similar or the exact same as a traditional Glock 19. So all those reloads are going to feel the same to you because the magazine is the same width the gun is the same magwell and control, so you can practice all of your reloads without buying a ton of new holsters. The only thing that's going to translate differently is the recoil impulse from this 22 long rifle to the 9mm. But it is better, in my opinion, to get a trainer that feels the same as your traditional firearm, even though the recoil impulse isn't going to be quite the same. So now here are my final thoughts after putting about 650 rounds through this Glock 44. You will get updates because I'm going to be comparing this with other handguns, running a ton of rounds through it to make sure everything is solid. But right off the bat, I feel like this is a solid, reliable handgun, for me anyways, after that 150 round break-in period. It feels very similar to a Glock and it makes a perfect training aid. So it really does translate magazine and guns to your incomplete kit so you don't have to worry about transitioning over. If you just want to put some rounds down range, a step above dry fire, this was really shine. Here comes the downfalls though. 10 round magazines, no threaded barrel, and a high MSRP leaves a lot to be desired when things like the Taurus TX-22 comes with two 16 round magazines and a threaded barrel adapter all in the box for definitely under 300, closer to about 260. So are there better 22 handguns out there uh, for cheaper? And, and my answer is yes, there are in my opinion anyways, but they don't feel like a Glock 19. So if you were a Glock guy and you only shoot Glocks, this is a very good option for a trainer pistol. Forgive my voice in this video, I am recovering from a cold, but I felt like this video had to get out there because a lot of people are reporting what they're seeing with their Glock 44. And I thought another data point would be good, especially at that break in 650 round mark. I will be shooting it more this week and next week and giving you guys an update as well as comparison videos to other 22s. Let me know what you want to see done with this handgun and we will try it out. And again, a huge shout out to American Pawn and Gun located in Monroe, North Carolina for helping me do fair and honest evaluations. Swing by those guys right off 74 and you'll probably run into me there. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.